Hey, I'm James, and in this video I'm going to discuss the musculature of the back. The main focus of the video is on the arrangement of the muscles of the back, but I will touch upon general innovation and basic function as I go through the layers. Check out the fantastic articles on the Geeky Medics website to get more information on the muscles of the back. Subscribe to Geeky Medics to be the first to know when we release new videos. The muscles of the back are described as being arranged in a series of layers, and it is often good to think about the musculature in this way, as it helps break the muscles up, which I find helps with learning them. I am going to build upon the arrangement described in the articles on the Geeky Medics website by including some additional terms and muscles. It is generally agreed that the muscles are divided into an extrinsic group and an intrinsic group, or true group. The extrinsic group are muscles that have an influence on the upper limb, and therefore run from the upper limb and the axial skeleton, as indicated in this text box here, or have a role in respiration or proprioception, as indicated in this text box. The intrinsic, or true muscles of the back, lie deep to the extrinsic muscles. These are also arranged in layers from superficial to deep, and categorising them in this way tends to facilitate learning. I have added a sub-occipital muscle group to the intrinsic muscles, which builds upon the articles on the Geeky Medics site. Throughout the video, I will also refer to this schematic, which will hopefully help with visualising where the muscles are in relation to each other. However, do appreciate that this schematic is of the thoracic region, and so can only be used as an approximation of the muscle layers in different regions of the vertebral column. It makes sense to work from superficial to deep, and so I'll start with the extrinsic group of muscles. As I said before, the superficial layer in the extrinsic group are muscles that run between the back and upper limb. A common feature of these muscles is that all of them, except trapezius, are innervated by nerves derived from the brachial plexus. So let's start with trapezius and latissimus dorsi. Trapezius is a large triangular flat muscle that extends from T12 to the external occipital protuberance. All fibres from these attachments then converge on the clavicle and scapula. The muscle is divided into an upper, middle and lower fibre group that all have different actions on the scapula, so have a look at the superficial back muscles article for the actions of each part of the trapezius. It is innervated by the spinal accessory nerve. The latissimus dorsi is attached to the iliac crest, lumbar and lower thoracic regions on the axial skeleton. The tendon continues towards the upper limb to insert on the floor of the intertubecular sulcus of the humerus. The muscle acts to adduct, extend and medially rotate the humerus. It is innervated by the thoracodorsal nerve. Now we are going to go to some of the deeper muscles whilst keeping the muscles that I have just described so that we can orientate ourselves. Here we can see levator scapulae and the rhomboid muscles, which all run from the scapula to the vertebral column. Levator scapulae attaches to the superior angle of the scapula and the transverse processes of the upper cervical vertebra. The muscle elevates the scapula and is innervated directly by the third and fourth cervical spinal nerves and the fifth cervical nerve by the dorsal scapular nerve. Rhomboid minor is attached to the lower portion of the ligamentum nuci and the spinous processes of C7 and T1 and passes to the medial end of the spine of the scapula. Rhomboid major passes from the spinous processes of T2 to T5 to the medial border of the scapula. The rhomboid muscles retract the scapula and are innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve. I will finish off the extrinsic group with the serratus posterior muscles. The muscles that I have just described are here on the right of the model. The serratus posterior muscles are demonstrated on the left. Serratus posterior superior and inferior are really intrinsic muscles of the chest wall, but often get described with the back musculature. The superior muscle passes from the spines of C7 to T2 to ribs 2 to 5. The muscle is innervated by the associated intercostal nerves and may have a role in elevating the ribs, though the function in humans is not known. The inferior muscle is attached to the spines of T10 to L3 and the lower four ribs. It is innervated by the T9 to T12 spinal nerves and acts to lower the ribs. The rest of the video will focus on the intrinsic muscles of the back, and I will start with the superficial group. This muscle layer is located here on the schematic. The splenius muscles are the most superior of the superficial intrinsic muscles. 
splenius capitis passes from the mastoid process of the temporal bone and parts of the occipital bone to the spinous processes of C7 to T4. Splenius capitis rotates the head when acting unilaterally and extends the head when working bilaterally. It is innervated by the dorsal rami of the second and third cervical spinal nerves. Splenius cervices is similar to that of splenius capitis, but just located inferiorly to it. It is attached to the transverse processes of the atlas and the axis and passes to the spinous processes of T3 to T6. Splenius cervices either rotates or extends the upper cervical vertebra, depending on whether it is contracting unilaterally or bilaterally. It is innervated by the dorsal rami of the lower cervical spinal nerves. Erector spinae is a muscle mass divided into three individual muscles that include spinalis, longissimus, and iliocostalis. This muscle mass spans the majority of the vertebral column, though each of the three muscles are limited to regions of the vertebral column. For example, spinalis spans from the thoracic and upper cervical regions, whereas iliocostalis extends from the lower cervical vertebra to the iliac crest. Consequently, each of the muscles are divided into regional components. Check out the deep back muscles article on the Geeky Medic site to learn more about the regional components of each of the muscles and the associated muscle attachments. These muscles are innervated by the dorsal rami of the cervical, thoracic and lumbar spinal nerves. The erector spinae muscle group are powerful extensors when acting bilaterally and will produce lateral flexion when acting unilaterally. The spinal transverse and suboccipital muscles form the intermediate layer of the intrinsic muscles and are located here on the schematic. The spinal transverse muscles include semispinalis, multifidus and rotatorius. Semispinalis is the most superficial of the group. It extends from the nuchal lines of the occiput to T10. Multifidus extends the vertebral column, as we can see when semispinalis is removed. Multifidus is primarily located on the lamina of the vertebra, though it expands to cover the sacrum at the most inferior attachment. The final muscle of the spinal transverse group is rotatorius, which is the deepest of the group. Rotatorius is primarily found in the thoracic region, though it may extend into the cervical and lumbar regions. If we look closer, it is possible to see that rotatorius consists of long and short muscle bellies, where rotatorius longus spans two vertebral levels and brevis spans one. Most of the spinal transverse group are innervated by the dorsal rami of the associated spinal nerves, except semispinalis capitis, which is innervated by the greater occipital nerve and the third cervical nerve. All of the spinal transverse muscles are extensors of the vertebral column. If we return to the schematic, we can see the arrangement of this muscle group. Generally speaking, semispinalis is located here, multifidus is here, and finally rotatorius is here. I will remove the spinal transverse group to focus on the suboccipital muscles. These muscles are not included in the muscles of the back articles on the website, but I have included them here as they are often described in this muscle layer. The suboccipital muscles include rectus capitis posterior, major and minor, and obliquus capitis superior and inferior. Rectus capitis major attaches to the spine of C2 and the inferior nuchal line, whereas minor passes between the inferior nuchal line and the posterior tubercle of C1. Obliquus capitis inferior attaches to the spine of C2 and transverse process of the atlas, whereas the superior muscle passes between the transverse process of the atlas to the inferior nuchal line. These muscles are innervated by the dorsal rami of the first cervical spinal nerve. The muscles extend at the atlanto-occipital joints and rotate at the atlanto-axial joints. The deepest of the intrinsic muscles include the interspinalis and intertransversari muscles. The easiest to describe are the interspinalis muscles, which extend between the spinous processes of the vertebra. They are numerous in the cervical region and less frequent in the thoracic and lumbar regions. The intertransversari muscles demonstrate regional variations. They are prominent in the cervical region where anterior and posterior sets are present between the transverse processes. We are mostly seeing the posterior muscles on this model, but here is an anterior muscle. The thoracic muscles consist of one band that extends between the transverse processes. Finally, the lumbar muscles consist of medial and lateral sets. The function of interspinalis and intertransversari are not really known but it is thought that they offer a proprioceptive function.
So let's summarize. The muscles of the back are separated into extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. The superficial extrinsic muscles act on the upper limb, whereas the deeper muscles assist with respiration. These muscle groups are located here on the schematic. The intrinsic muscles act on the vertebral column and are arranged into superficial, intermediate and deep layers. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you thought of this video and what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. You can do this by leaving a comment or dropping us an email.